Father Anthony is one of our World Mission Sunday guests. So he and also the other guests uh, of Miss You just arrived yesterday in Dresden. And we are very happy that he is now online with us. Let me quickly introduce Father Anthony to you. Father Anthony at the moment is the Secretary General of the Amicea, which is the Association of Member Episcopal Conferences in Eastern Africa, which is why also his presentation today will be about the topic of synodality within the church in Eastern Africa. Father Anthony used to be the national um, director of ecumenism for the Tanzanian Bishops Conference and was later also appointed as the Secretary General of the Tanzanian Episcopal Conference, a post which he held from 2005 to 2013. Father Makunde has a master's degree in non-profit administration, which he obtained at the Notre Dame University in the USA. Moreover, he holds also a doctorate in theology, which he in which he specialized uh, in ecumenism. And he obtained his doctorate at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome. So Father Anthony, thank you very much for flying all the way from Kenya to Dresden. We are very happy and looking forward to the next week with you when we are traveling together to different dioceses all over Germany. The floor is yours. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much for the invitation. Let me take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the Missio uh, leadership for organizing this important uh, workshop. And I also want to sincerely thank uh, the speakers who have um, already presented their papers, particularly Sister uh, Natalia, who has been with us uh, in the so-called African Initiative. My presentation today is not going to be theological um, as some might expect. I just want to share experience with the participants of what uh, we have been doing in the Amesia region and particularly in our member conferences regarding the Synodal journey. So it's more of a, an experience rather than a, a theological reflection. At this particular time, I'm trying to make my slides to move. The technical people are helping me here. One of the areas which the church in Amesia region is very grateful to Pope Francis and particularly to the uh, Sino Regione is the opportunity that has been granted by the church at this particular time, an invitation to listen to each other. I was privileged to attend a number of discussions in the small Christian community the grassroots level of our church structure in the Amesia region. And I could hear from the participants how excited they were, how happy they are by being given this privilege, this rare opportunity, and they even called it a gift by Pope Francis to be able to sit together as a community of believers, the baptized, members of the Catholic Church to give out their views as they are inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's a rare moment. It doesn't come very often, whereby a catechist in an outstation, out church somewhere, is given an opportunity to speak to his bishop, and the bishop sits there calmly listening to that catechist who doesn't even have a diploma in theology, leave aside a certificate or doctorate that to say. So it has been received in a very positive mode by the entire community of the Catholics, particularly in the grassroots level, as, as I said, as a gift. It's a rare privilege that has been offered to them. Secondly, what we are saying and what we have learned 
from the synod process in the Amesia region is the spirit which Pope Francis has just uh, initiated. The spirit of living together, the spirit of sharing together, the spirit of honoring the challenges we face and how we can respond to them inspired by the word of God. This has been there, but not to the level which the synodal process has just said for us. And that's how the church in the Amesia region responded to the invitation of Pope Francis after a deep prayer and reflection on the word of God to discuss issues pertaining to how we live our faith in a particular uh, place. We are aware that the way we have responded might differ from the other continents or other regions. For us, we embarked on the diocesan level, which after compiling the information, the voices of the people from the small Christian communities up to the uh, outstations, to the parish level, to the diocesan level, the national conferences managed to compile the documents and together they sent a document to the Synod Committee in Rome. This particular time as I am speaking, we are in the process of taking the same journey, putting together whatever was submitted in the national level to prepare what we call a regional synthesis so that as we go to the continental level, we might carry on and preserve that chain of thinking, the voices that came from the grassroots level throughout the diocese to the conference and thereby in the regional level and thereafter to the continental level. I'm aware that um, when we speak of uh, a continental level, in Africa, we do have these regional structures that make the continental level. In the original documents that were given by the Synod Committee, this regional structure was not mentioned. But just to let the participants here uh, get the point on how comes a region is involved, a region in the sense of these blocks which we have in Africa. A request was presented by the SECAM leadership during the official launching of the synodal process in Rome that given the nature of the continent, the size of it, the number of the Catholic in the African continent, it will be good that uh, we make use of the regional structures that exist. And for us in Africa, SECAM being a continental body, it has under it a number of uh, regional bodies. These are the Episcopal uh, groupings within a geographic location. Just to mention for the sake of understanding, we have quite a number of them, about eight in fact, we have the Association of Episcopal Conference of Central Africa, ASEAC, which brings together three countries. We have the Association of Episcopal Conferences of Central Africa, ASERA, which bring uh, in a number of countries, including uh, Congo, Gabon, Chad, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea. And then we have the Association of Member Episcopal Conferences in Eastern Africa, where I sit as the Secretary General with quite a number of countries in the eastern part of Africa, uh, with Djibouti and Somalia being our affiliate members. And then we have the Regional Episcopal Conferences of West Africa, RECOA or CERAO, which brings a big number of the countries in the western part uh, of the continent of Africa. And then in North Africa, we have the Assembly of the Catholic Hierarchy of Egypt, it stands alone because of its um, nature and structure. 
We have the regional Episcopal conferences of North Africa, which brings together uh, about uh, five countries. And then in the southern part of Africa, we have the interregional meeting of the bishops of Southern Africa, which brings also together a number of countries. And lastly, uh, Madagascar and the islands in the Indian Ocean. So these are the structures that uh, form the continental um, body known as SECAM. So it was thought that it is good to make use of these regional structures, big as they are, bringing together quite a number of um, uh, Christian faithful to enable that same thinking that came from the small Christian communities up to the diocesan level to be carried on to the continental level and thereby when we are in the universal level, we will be speaking the same language. I just want to share a, a few areas as far as the topic which I, I was requested to present is concerned, uh, synodality and uh, participation. Um, synodality and participation has been mentioned specifically in theme uh, eight of the synodal journey, whereby uh, authority and participation uh, was uh, mentioned. Based on the personal, again, experience of um, attending the discussions in the small Christian communities and also in the diocesan level, quite a number of issues came up. Some, of course, managed to find their way to the final document, which was forwarded to the Synodal Committee. Some could not find their way, but at least the picture, the general um, understanding uh, of the people as far as participation is concerned was very, was very clear. Um, it was interesting to hear from the discussion how the issues uh, regarding to, uh, to true leadership uh, and uh, authority that take in place the concept of participation came out in the discussion. And the very people uh, who, as I said, do not have any certificate or diploma in theology, they were very conversant in bringing up issues, the concept of Christ, the servant leader, that's the concept they would wish to see is operating in the church structures as far as um, the leadership and participation uh, is concerned. So it's a message that was clearly presented and a message learned as the synodal process uh, is uh, still going on. The question of um, participation in the community, um, I remember uh, referring to the questions that were prepared to kind of accompany uh, the discussion in the groups was asking, uh, can you mention some of the areas you think that um, participation in the church has been uh, clearly uh, followed? And people were responding without hesitating that um, small Christian communities has been a clear forum in the church in Amesia, uh, whereby the baptized have experienced uh, that atmosphere and the environment of being uh, active and participating fully in the church um, affairs. They also mentioned about the church groups we remember those apostolates, different uh, lay associations that are vibrant in most of our uh, African parishes. Others also mentioned about the Assisian synods. Apart from the uh, general synods organized in Rome or special synods for particular area, and in Africa we refer to the two um, synods specifically for the continent of Africa, but quite a number of dioceses within our region have had a synod in one term or another. And the normal uh, uh, weekly or monthly meetings. 
So there was a clear message sent here that um, apart from coming together on Sundays for uh, liturgical celebrations, the day-to-day -day, uh, activities that bring together various groups, whether in a meeting or in associations, is a forum for the lay faithful to be able to express their level of participation uh, in the church. And this is uh, a true reflection of the synodal of the synodal church. Well, looking at the concept of authority in relation to participation, it has been mentioned uh, by uh, a, one of the speakers here. Uh, there were a little bit of reservations uh, as regards to the way uh, authority is exercised in the church today. And this feeling mostly coming from the young people uh, that referred to monarchical style in which the church operates. Of course, um, my predecessor uh, used other terms stronger than what uh, came out of this small Christian community which I attended. But at least we are more or less speaking the same thing in different languages and different emphasis that uh, there is that feeling that the way the authority is exercised in the Catholic Church at this particular time uh, needs to be revisited. Uh, there is also a general feeling that some people do not have enough space uh, to participate in the church because as it has been mentioned also by the two predecessors uh, because of gender issue or social status, age and culture, et cetera, et cetera. So when we refer to participation, we can see that yes, um, there is a lot that has been appreciated uh, in the synodal uh, discussion, but there are areas which need to be addressed so that things can be, uh, can be better. Uh, my personal experience or original experience in the synodal uh, journey as far as participation is concerned, is that um, this synod has been a learning opportunity. And we really um, acknowledge that. That there are a number of issues that need not to wait for the post-synodal uh, encyclical to reach uh, our dioceses. But there is a need of having an, a pastoral plan starting from this term onwards to address some issues which have been identified in the local level and need to be worked upon. I will mention some uh, of the items here in, in a very brief way. One was the issue of uh, promotion of dialogue, which has also been mentioned by uh, the previous speaker. Teamwork as an effective communication, uh, bearing in mind the emerging trends uh, particularly on the understanding of a service leadership. And then about ongoing formation um, to make people understand their role in the church. True, as me mentioned, the Second Vatican Council opened up um, the door for the lay faithful to fully engage into uh, the church life. But we are saying that um, 50 years be, uh, beyond, still there is a lot that needs to be done. And here, ongoing formation is uh, mentioned as uh, a way forward, which does not need to wait for a post-synodal uh, popo encyclical. Um, issues of transparency and accountability, it has been mentioned by the previous speaker, although using uh, other terms, but we are speaking the same thing uh, to kind of bring up that uh, element of active participation. And then finally, mentioning about uh, to promote the role uh, of the laity so that may enhance participation and core responsibility. So there are quite a number of issues that the synodal journey, as we are still in the process, have been identified as key issues that need the attention of the local church and the regional church while the uh, Synod Committee continues with the preparation uh, of the uh, ordinary Synod uh, due to come next, next year. 
Um, I would like just to uh, stop here uh, by saying the Synod uh, is in the process. And for us, we think that uh, this is an occasion which will not pass like other occasions. The spirit of synodality is here to stay, although the Synod will uh, pass after October 2023, but for us, it has been a beginning of a new journey, new journey of being a church in a Messiah region, new journey of being a church in Africa. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much, Father Anthony, for your presentation and for introducing the structural system on the African continent to us so that we can have a better understanding of how the different African uh, Episcopal conferences support the synodal structures at the moment. We have a question in our chat. Um, one of the participants would like to know whether you see a challenge also to really bring in all the perspectives, all the opinions of the local po uh, population on the African continent, or in your case, in Kenya, because we have very huge pastoral cities, mega cities, like Nairobi, for example, but also there are many rural areas or slums, townships on the African continent. So is there also a challenge maybe to really bring in the perspectives of all believers? Um, that would be a question from one of our participants. Yes, um, in the Synod journey, we have uh, come to acknowledge and realize that there is a huge uh, gap between the people who are living in the major cities like Nairobi and those who are living in the rural areas. Um, the life, the social structures differ very much. Even the very um, normal activity of attending small Christian communities, whereas in the rural areas, it's free. They can plan any time they want to meet because they have the time, they have uh, the space, but it is very difficult for those who are living in major cities like ours there. Um, it, the, the social structures are, are, are different, but we were able, as far as the Synodal Journey was concerned, um, the majority of the people in our cities, in particular Nairobi, they responded very positively uh, in the small Christian communities and also the uh, gatherings that were organizing, organized within the parish uh, premises, they were well attended. And these, they were, uh, were also backed up by the induction process, which was done um, uh, before the uh, exercise or the homework uh, started. Whether we can accommodate uh, everything that has been brought up, um, it, it's, it's an interesting question. But again, as I said in my presentation, there are issues that need the attention of the Universal Church there are issues that need the attention of the local church. In the synodal discussion, we have identified clearly that um, these are the areas we think uh, there are opportunities we can capitalize on. These are the weaknesses we are being facing as far as uh, participation and other uh, activities of the church life is concerned. So there should be a pastoral plan, a pastoral program to make sure that uh, we address these issues. Um, there are also uh, some other challenges uh, depending on the uh, socioeconomic status. Uh, quite a number uh, of challenges uh, came up and um, we, we don't need even encyclopedia to find up uh, all those things because you see the structure of the people. We have people who are living in the slums, for example, who are um, lacking the basic um, uh, human, uh, human needs. And then on the other hand, you have people who are, you can say, relatively enjoying a life which uh, you can be envious of. Uh, how are we going to bring this together? And they pray in the same church, they read the same Bible, they profess the same faith. 
So these are the challenges, um, as it has been mentioned, the social teaching of the Catholic Church needs to be revisited so that uh, the, the, the church um, uh, invitation to all those who are being given more can think of uh, sharing with the others, but also to, um, advoc uh, to do a strong advocacy to make sure that um, the social structures we have, the policies we have, can cut across to look at those who are uh, marginalized or deprived of the essential, essential needs. Uh, so back to your question, yes, uh, there are issues which are manageable within the local context, but there are issues which uh, will remain to be a challenge um, on the uh, national level and even on the universal level, unless uh, the world is able to address the social um, challenges that are facing uh, the, the society at this particular time. Thank you very much, Father Anthony, for your explanation. I just realized that it was a very important question to ask to you because from how I understood that question, I think um, the participant was rather concerned that we are losing the people in the rural areas. But from how I understood your um, explanation, it is rather easier for people in rural areas to come together as a community and to ex change their ideas. So thank you for clarifying this and also for highlighting the point that we need different structures, also pastoral ways of communication, depending on in which yeah, town or village we are living. So thank you very much. And we are looking forward to have further exchanges with you also in the next days in Dresden and also here in Leipzig to clarify more questions. Thank you very much, Father Anthony. You are welcome.